So, all right, let's look at the third step for the derivation of the shocklet reed hull um, expression. So, we're going to look at steady state trap population. So, in the previous sections, we calculated the recombination rates, which is this expression here for the electrons and for the holes. So, this was dealing with the occupation in equilibrium for the electrons and holes in their respective bands. In the last section, we related the emission to the capture for electrons and for holes, and we had some gnarly expressions that again involve some exponentials with the intrinsic energy level, mid-gap, ballpark, and the uh, degeneracy of the traps and the trap levels. All right. Now we're going to calculate the population of these traps given equilibrium, uh, sorry, not equilibrium, but steady state. So we're begin, going to begin to take this system out of equilibrium. All right. Ooh, okay. So let's start from these expressions that we had from the uh, section one. I want to focus on the trap population now. So meaning we're beginning to combine the point of view again uh, between these two, two views. Okay, here we are. So we're going to look at the occupation of these traps inside here. Okay, we have the same la uh, labeling of the processes, etc. But now we're going to aim on the occupation of these states. Okay. Now, we're going to look at um, taking the system out of equilibrium. So we're going to look at the occupation of the trap states here in time as a function of uh, perturbations. So we're going to imagine we might inject carriers uh, through a uh, applied voltage through contacts, or we might inject carriers through an optical interaction. And we're going to look at the occupation of the traps due to such processes. Okay, that is of course related to the occupation of the electrons and the occupation of the holes in their respective bands. So we can calculate um, the uh, occupation of the traps if they are increasing in number, if the number of occupied traps increases, that means the number of electrons decreases or the number of holes decrease. So it's two things, either electrons hopping down, increasing uh, the number of traps that are occupied, or holes increasing um, by creating more of them and, uh, okay? So here is a plus sign, here is a minus sign. And we're looking at the number of uh, uh, electron-occupied traps. We had calculated in equilibrium uh, these um, distributions. Now we're going to do it out of equilibrium. And we're going to drop off all these indices of zero that we had uh, in the previous section. All right. So we write these uh, two expressions into, into here, and uh, we're, getting, we're getting a similar rate equation, but we're not subdividing it anymore, because now we're going to need to connect the two um, systems, okay? So here we are, we have four elements in this rate, and uh, the question now is, how do we get the emission and the capture rates? How do we uh, relate these physical constants, and that was somewhat of a pain in the previous section. Right? We, we had a whole section on deriving a relationship between these coefficients. Now, there's a uh, these coefficients, emission and capture, are physical properties of the system. They depend on, let's say, a foreign atom, a trap atom, sitting in the semiconductor. Uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, providing a trap state, being able to uh, take an electron uh, or uh, uh, emit an electron. They are established in the chemistry 
We're not um, anticipating uh, changing bond lengths or um, moving these traps around by looking at adding more electrons or taking electrons out of the system. The system is physically stable. So there's no real fundamental change in the ability of these traps to emit electrons or to capture electrons. So the, the number of overall electrons around the system should not change those physical constants, okay? So we're not taking the system so far out of equilibrium or is pushing it so far physically that the physical properties of capture and emission um, change. So if that's true, then we can say that the capture rates, are the equilibrium capture rates and the emissions coefficients are the equilibrium emission coefficients. What that means is a trap will continue to emit or capture electrons regardless on how heavily other electrons are floating around because we're looking at one individual process for one individual trap. That overall trap is not being moved by the electrons physically or um, it, it doesn't change its chemistry. So that means we can also use the relationship we had between them, between emission and capture. In, we obtain that in equilibrium and we're going to use it now for out of equilibrium calculations. But these are the occupations of the states. The fundamental processes don't change. So that's the capture and emission are the fundamental process and the uh, process rates. They don't change. But the occupation of electrons, occupation of holes, the occupation of the traps, that can be all driven out of equilibrium. But the fundamental roads, if you will, remain unchanged regardless on how many electrons are traveling uh, on it. All right. So now we can plug these expressions in here and obtain a rate that is um, uh, where we can uh, eliminate the emission coefficients again uh, and just have expressions in terms of capture coefficients here. All right. Like this. Okay, so nothing fancy happened in the last step, but the fundamental process here is that we assumed that emission and capture are related with each other through equilibrium properties and that the rates of capture themselves are not changing due to the, any non-equilibrium conditions we apply to the system. Okay, it'll come in handy to take the second segment here that is just dealing with the holes, this guy here, this guy here. We need that expression here uh, in a little while. So I'm just gonna uh, highlight it and also transfer it into my next slide, okay? Good. So here we are, we are looking at the steady, we want to look at the steady state tra trap population. So here's the uh, number of uh, electrons in the trap uh, related again to electron processes and hole processes. Okay. Good. In steady state, the sum of those of of these processes actually we're just setting this to zero. Okay. Okay. Now we'd like to calculate. <clears throat> everything in terms of occupied traps. We just want to look at number of electrons in a trap, occupied traps. Okay, so we're going to substitute the empty traps, which are the difference between the total traps and the occupied traps. We're substituting that into the expression above. Well, it gets a little longer. And we're going to solve this expression for the number of occupied traps. We solve for nt. So we pull nt out and then um, pull it into the denominator like this. So now we have a longish expression for the number of traps 
the occupation of the traps. Okay. We could stop here if our interest would be just to look at some properties of traps. But that's not quite what we're after yet. We ult ultimately don't care so much about what's going on here, but we care about a relationship of overall electron uh, um, recombination. But the trap occupation is something that is the intermediary to this trap-assisted tunneling. So we'll need to work a little bit longer, and uh, we define a coefficient, capital A here, it's just a shorthand that we'll use again in, in the next few slides, okay? So, we have an expression for the trap occupation, trap population in steady state. What we're going to do next is actually calculate the overall rate for electrons uh, to be uh, destroyed. Actually, we'll calculate the whole destruction, meaning electron uh, hopping all the way down to, to uh, destroy a hole. Okay? Okay, that's going to be in the next segment. Thank you.